I've added a simplified example here to consider how consumer price index is really calculated and what we really mean by the basket of goods. So let's consider, for example, that we just are going to define a basket of goods as two goods, only two goods, milk and shoes. And then we have to define the quantity of that, of that basket. And we've defined that quantity as 20 gallons of milk and four pairs of shoes. This quantity is typically set based off the base year, and we'll get into that a little bit further when discussing the details of specific CPI. But we want to go through and actually calculate it. So let's go ahead and kind of go through and do this. And I'm going to do this in uh, two different ways. The first way we're going to do this is for the 2013 basket. So we've got 2013 prices and 2014 prices. So let's go ahead and calculate the 2013 basket, the 2013 basket right here. And I'm just going to go across in this way for milk. It's going to be price times quantity, so it's going to be 20 units times $2.10 per unit. Uh, and 20 times 210 is equal to $42. And I'm going to do the exact same for the shoes. There's uh, There are four pairs of shoes, and those shoes are $88 per pair. Uh, I'm sorry, $85. Let me erase that. $85 per pair and 4 times 85 that works out to be 340 and so if I sum this up if I add up the milk the quantity times the price of milk uh, plus the quantity times the t times the price of shoes we get 340 plus 42 which is 382 let's do the exact same thing but now let's do it for prices in 2014 and so we want to go ahead and do the 2014 basket. And in this basket, we have the same quantities, so those don't change, as we've talked about with the difference between real and nominal. So we're really looking to kind of calculate real changes in, in inflation and in price uh, indexing. So we're going to keep the quantity the same. The price does change. That changes to $2.50 per unit. 20 times 250 is $50. And then we're going to do the same down here. We've got four as the quantity of shoes, pairs of shoes, times a price of $88. Four times 88 is $3, sorry, $352. And if I add this up so that we get the milk and the shoes, which is our basket, right? That these two things together are our basket. Uh, 352 plus 50 is 402, $402. And so in each of these cases, this would be the total for our baskets. So then what we want to do is calculate the CPI. And the CPI itself, right, the, con the, the consumer price index in this case, the CPI, and I'm just going to mark it here in green, and we can come across. The first thing we have to do is we have to set a base year. It does not matter which year is your base year, either 2013 prices or 2014. All it's going to do is put everything relative to those prices. So it looks like prices increase, so just kind of out of ease, we will set this for 2013 prices. So we will say the base year base year is equal to 2013 and anytime you report price data or real data versus nominal data you always want to report what is the base year so what do we do to calculate CPI well CPI is equal to the price of the basket in the current year divided by the price of the basket in the base year we've got the price of the basket right here so for 2013 and this is true always the case of the base year is always a CPI of 100 or an index of 100 if you're doing it in terms of the base year. And so it would work out to be this, right? For 2013, it would be 382 divided by 382, right? And then and times 100 because we typically look at this in, in, a, in an index of, and I'll just mark it up here, times 100 in an index of 100. So we have 382 divided by 382, which is 1 times 100, which works out to be 100. Let's do the exact same thing for the 2014 basket. And what would it be? It's the price of the basket in 2014 divided by the price of the basket in the base year 2013. So that's going to be 402 divided by 382. And 402 divided by 382 is uh, 0 0.05 2 times 100. I'll, I'll, I'll mark it here to keep it consistent times 100 
and that works out to be 105.2. And so here we've got now an index. We have the consumer price index for that year. And alone, right, in and of itself, that number doesn't really tell us anything unless we have something to compare it to. What it does tell us is that compared with the base year, prices have increased 5.2%. And this goes back to uh, what we've really talked about with inflation here. So what is inflation, right? Inflation is the measure of the increase in overall price level. When things are based in 100, then we know, because we'd be dividing by 100, the price increase from 2013 to 2014 is 5.2%. But let's just, let's just prove this out, right? The inflation rate is the percent change in price index from the previous period and so our inflation rate our inflation rate right this is equal to and this is going to be equal to our new rate which is 105 I'm sorry new CP CPI 105.2 our new level of prices minus our old level of prices 100 divided by our old level of prices 100 and 5 right the difference here is 5.2 divided by 100 which would equal to 0 0.052 or as I was saying 5.2 percent and it's one of the useful things and I'll put this as a plus it's one of the useful things about having a base here is that we can just then look at this and we can say well prices increased from 2013 to 2014 prices increased 5.2 percent and we could and then if we wanted to go into the, the pieces of the basket and measure what was the inflation rate here for milk or here for shoes, we could really break it down and say, okay, well, what are the, what are the drivers of the inflation rate? And that's one of the most important things that we can do when trying to understand what is actually going on in the economy. Because as I've said before, this is the overall price level. So what we're saying is that overall prices in this basket increased 5.2%. However, there was some sort of variability within those actual goods themselves. And that gets into some of the problems with CPI that we'll cover in the next lecture.